Am I the a-hole for not wanting to name my child after my late husband? Plus updates. Original post. Me 31 and my current husband 35 recently found out that we were expecting twin boys. And my first husband's mother is livid that we aren't naming one of them after her son. A little background. My first husband Michael and I were college sweethearts. We got married not long after graduation, and I thought I would be with him for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, we were only married for a couple of months before Michael passed away suddenly. It was one of the worst times in my life, and I never thought that I would ever fall in love again, much less get married again or have a family. I remained very close with Michael's mom, my mother-in-law, and she was very supportive when I eventually started dating again. Not long after I met my current husband, John, I took him to her house so that they could meet. She was so excited to meet him, and I remember going to the bathroom and crying tears of relief that she wasn't angry at me for moving on. When John and I got married, she was so happy for me, and on my wedding day, she took me aside and told me that she knew Michael was happy for me too. It meant so much to me to hear her say that. Earlier this year, John and I found out that we were pregnant. At first, mother-in-law was ecstatic, making jokes about being a bonus grandma and asking to help plan a gender reveal party and baby shower. But then when the subject of names came up, she was shocked that we weren't planning to name the baby after Michael. I explained to her that if it was a boy, we were going to name him after John's father. I could tell she wasn't happy, but she seemed to accept it. Things took a turn for the worst after my 20-week ultrasound when we found out that I was carrying twin boys. When I told her the news, she flat out told me that I had to name one of the babies after Michael, or she would never forgive me. When I told her that we weren't going to do that, she absolutely flipped, saying that I was betraying the memory of her son. I tried to make her understand that as much as I love and miss Michael, that chapter of my life is over. And I feel like it's disrespectful to John to insist on naming one of his children after another man. At first, John said that he would be fine with it if it was what I wanted, but eventually he admitted that DD made him uncomfortable. I never want to make my mother-in-law think that I've forgotten Michael or that he wasn't important to me but I don't want to name one of my children after him either. And honestly, I don't think he would have wanted me to. Are there are better ways of remembering him than giving his name to a child that will never have any real connection to him. I tried explaining this to mother-in-law, but she just wouldn't hear it. She told me that she would never speak to me again if I didn't name one of the babies after her son. She's been a really important part of my life, and I don't want to lose her. But at the same time, I feel like she's giving me an unfair ultimatum. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not today, home. We all grieve differently. It's your child to name. And if you don't want to name them something, don't. Name your child what you and your current significant other think is right. Your mother-in-law's in, in Nahal for putting this ultimatum on you. She's hurting bad, though. Burying your child is one of, if not the worst things in this world. Up to you if you want to give her a pass and being in Nahal about this, versus just cutting off the connection yourself. Not an easy choice. Congrats on the new babies, though, and good luck in life. It's been about a decade, though, since Michael died. And if not mother-in-law is reacting like this now, those two boys will most likely be treated like crap by her. Or she'll designate one of them her Michael. It'll lead to a lot of preferential treatment of that twin over the other. Sounds like not mother-in-law needs some serious therapy. And personally, I'd make her getting grief therapy an ultimatum for any chance of her interacting with those boys. If not, it's a crap show waiting to happen. Not today, home. It's great that you have maintained great relationship with your late husband's mother. That doesn't change the fact that your kids have no connection to Michael. It would be unfair to your husband and to the kid. Does your name have a story? Oh yeah, I was named after my mom's first husband. The names should be important to both of you or at least have some logical meanings. It's not like you were in a poly relationship and one partner died. Also, where I live, it is said that it's bad luck to name a child specifically after someone dead. Not today, home. I think it's time to break ties with her. Your husband must be a really patient man. He's the most patient, kind, and compassionate man I've ever met. And I tell him so every day. Now for the first update. Wow. Blown away by all the feedback and support. We are hosting in-laws, John's parents, so I can only add a short update for now. But I promise to leave a longer one when they go home in a couple of days. For now, I just want to address a few things I saw in the comments. A lot of you wanted clarification as to how long Michael has been gone. It will be 10 years this October. And no, Michael is not his real name. Any names that I've included in the post have been changed to protect anonymity. 
A lot of you also wondered why I'm still close with his mother after so long. I probably should have included this in the original post for context. But there are a couple of reasons for this. Michael was an only child and his father was never in the picture. And she has virtually no other family left besides a handful of cousins who live across the country. Over the years, she's been my steadfast supporter. Always the first to encourage me to live my life and be happy. Funnily enough, I might not have met John if it wasn't for her. A friend of mine had set me up with him on a blind date and I almost backed out. The only reason I didn't was because my ex-mother-in-law convinced me to go. Honestly, she is the last person I ever would have expected this from, which is why I found it so hard to deal with. A lot of you have said this is probably her being forced to finally deal with a lot of unprocessed grief, and I think that's probably true. I think at some point I stopped thinking of her as my mother-in-law and started thinking of her as a friend. I thought that she'd come to think of me the same way, but now I'm realizing that at least a part of her still sees me as Michael's wife. I am hopeful that we will find a way to work it out, but I am prepared to let her go if it comes to that, even though it would make me terribly sad. To those of you who said I should start putting up some boundaries with her, you're probably right. I honestly thought all of the bonus grandma jokes were harmless at first, but now I have started to think otherwise. I don't want to make any rash decisions yet until we've both had a chance to calm down. But as things stand now, she has a lot of work to do in a way of regaining my trust. As to where I stand on a name issue, I am not going to name either of my children after Michael. For those of you who were worried I might cave on the issue, don't be. It was never an option. I briefly considered doing something with a middle name, but ultimately decided against it. I don't want to burden either of my children by naming them after a man they will never have any connection to. As to how we honor Michael's memory, every year John and I go visit his grave on his birthday. It was actually John who started the tradition. The year we got engaged and we haven't missed a year since. Maybe someday when they're old enough, we'll take the boys. I don't know how exactly, but I'm sure we'll find a way to explain to them who Michael was and what he meant to me. For those of you who ask if this was having a negative impact on my marriage, the answer is no. John has been my rock through the entire pregnancy, and his only concern during this ordeal has been my emotional well-being. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if I wanted to name one of these babies after Michael, that he would let me and never say a word about it, no matter how much it hurt him. Which makes me even more determined not to cave on the issue, because I refuse to repay his selflessness with selfishness. As to where things stand with ex-mother-in-law and I, my sister-in-law, brother's wife, is good friends with her. They teach together at the same school. So right now, she's acting as a sort of go-between. She says that she thinks ex-mother-in-law is having a long overdue emotional breakdown. We both agree that she has avoided fully processing her grief, and now it's all coming to a boiling point. She's pushing hard to get her to see a therapist, and I'm hopeful that we can salvage at least some of our relationship. But if not, I'll find a way to live with it. And finally, to the handful of commenters who insinuated that I am still in love with Michael, and that I'm not being fair to John, let me just say that until you've been in my shoes, you won't understand. Michael and I were very young when we got married. I loved him very much and he will always, always have a place in my heart. But John is absolutely the love of my life. It took me years of therapy, but I don't feel guilty about it anymore. Thank you all so much for commenting and leaving your thoughts. It's helped me so much to process things and sort out my emotions. Planning to see my ex-mother-in-law later this week after current in-laws leave, and I will be back with an update as soon as possible. Now for the second update seven weeks later. I meant to do this sooner, but it has been a wild month. As it turns out, caring to human beings inside of you takes a bit of a toll, and lately I've been feeling it. As of yesterday, I'm at 32 weeks, which means we're officially out of the danger zone if the boys decide to come early, but hopefully they'll stay where they are for a little while longer. John and I were advised by a friend that we should give them names that mean something to us as a couple. So we decided to name them for our favorite Tom Hanks characters, as it was our mutual love for the actor that we first bonded over. Hint, neither of them will be named Forrest. One of them will be named after a character starred alongside Meg Ryan. Since I made this post, it has come to light that Axe's mother-in-law has a serious problem with alcohol. I never realized this before, because apparently she was very good at hiding it. Also, I've been told that while she has been nothing but supportive and kind to my face, she has made some very unkind comments about me and John behind our backs. She's even told some people that I cheated on Michael, her son, with John, even though I didn't even meet him until several years after Michael died. We went no contact two weeks ago and it makes me very sad, because Michael adored his mother and it would break his heart to see her like this. 
Because as awful as she's been to me lately, I know it's just because she's in pain. Still, I know he would understand why I've decided to cut her out of my life. I truly hope that one day she'll heal and we can find a way to be friends again. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my fiancé he doesn't get to name both of our babies? I'm pregnant with twins and my fiancé and I just found out we're having a boy and a girl. We started talking about names the other day. He told me that he really wanted to name the baby boy after himself. First and middle. I wasn't on board at first, but after thinking about it, I agreed. I told him that for the baby girl. I wanted her first name to be my sister since we were very close, and the middle to be my dad since he passed when I was young. My dad's name isn't really unisex, but is becoming a common girl's name. My fiancé got visibly sad and told me he wanted to name the baby girl after his mom and have the middle name be his dad's name. His dad's name is a unisex name. I told him that I didn't really think it was fair that he got to name the first baby what he wanted and now wants to name the second baby also what he wants. I also said it wasn't fair that my family gets excluded. He said he really wanted to incorporate at least his mom's name. I told him that the baby girl's middle name can be his mom's, but then the boy's middle name is going to be my dad's. He said he wanted a baby boy named completely after him though, so the baby is a junior. I told him he doesn't get to name both of the babies what he wants. He got upset about this comment and has been standoffish toward me. I don't think that was so awful of me to say, but now I'm second-guessing my comments and wondering if I'm an a-hole for it. Now for the top comments. Not an a-hole. Also, it is a nightmare paper-wise when a kid has the exact same name as their father. My family did this with my brother, and it causes so many problems. I highly don't recommend that you do that. Also, my brother started to resent his name due to him wanting to be his own unique person and not a copy of dad. I highly recommend not going the junior route. Strong support for your comment about your brother being named after his father. Let kids be their unique selves. My husband is a junior, and his father's financial information shows up on his credit report from time to time. Things like having a Sears credit card before he was actually born. You'd think different birthdays and social security numbers would prevent it, but no. Not today, home. He's being selfish. Both child names should require two yes votes. Exactly. Two yeses and one no is what it takes to name babies. Not today, home. I presume he thinks they are both getting his last name too? Why shouldn't get one your last name? And he got visibly sad when he didn't get his way. It's time for you to start getting visibly sad that he can't respect your feelings. Here's a fair solution. You each choose two names. First name choice for one gender results and middle choice for the other. He picks Anne and Brad. You pick Claire and David. You end up with Anne, Claire and David Brad. Or you end up with Claire, Anne and Brad, David. Edit. I feel I need to clear something up that I'm seeing a lot. Quite a lot of people keep telling me to give the kids original names and not name them after someone else. In my family, it's very normal to recycle names and name new babies after family members. It's actually considered abnormal if you give your baby an original name. I know this isn't the norm and it's weird for others. But like I said, it's normal for us and our family actually loves having recycled names. A few of us love that we have the same names. We don't find it weird and we enjoy it. Every family is different, and our families enjoy sharing names. It's fine if you don't agree, but that's just how our family is. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for demanding that my mother display photos of my wife in her house? I got married two years ago to the love of my life. I feel like my mom doesn't really like her, but the relationship is mostly okay. Honestly, I have a feeling that since I got married, I've been left out of a lot of stuff. But the only one I can prove is my mom's birthday trip. To be clear, no one is straight up rude, but it is clear my mom and wife don't vibe, and the rest of my family seems mad about her, which does make me sad. My mom has a wall with a lot of pictures on it. There are plenty of pictures of my sister's partner and there are pictures of extended family, but not a single one of my wife. My mom has pictures of her, because some of these were taken at events we were at, but she just chooses the ones without my wife. Honestly, this is not something I would have picked up on, but my wife did, and it bothered her. My wife's family is huge on family, and while I don't think my mother-in-law loves me, she definitely includes me in everything. I brought it up to my mom, and she said she hadn't noticed. I said I didn't really believe her, and she shrugged and said my wife isn't her daughter. I pointed out that my sister's partner isn't her son, or my aunt's husband isn't her brother, but she has pictures of them. My mom said it was her house, and the whole conversation's dumb. I said she can't exclude the love of my life, 
And my mom said this is a really pathetic thing to care about and we are being weird. My wife was upset and feels like it was a clear statement. So I told my mom she could either put up some pictures of my wife or we wouldn't be coming over. My mom said, okay, don't come over. That was probably four to five months ago. I checked up about Christmas and asked if she had put up even one picture. My mom said no, she wasn't going to, we can't make her, and just don't come to Christmas and see if she cares. Well, we won't be going to Christmas, but my sister is super pissed at me and thinks I'm an entitled a-hole, and I heard my stepdad was making fun of us. I don't feel too bad because everything I've read online talks about you have to be a united front. Not a hole You are doing everything right. Time to show them how much better your life is without them. I know with current events, travel can be tricky, but you should try to do something special for Christmas and take lots of photos. Also, never take or post another photo of yourself without your wife ever again. If you really want to get petty, if you know there's something your mom wants, but your stepdad hasn't delivered, for example, a piece of jewelry she wants, buy one for your wife and make sure your mom finds out indirectly and take slash post photos. Edit for those having a problem with my petty suggestion. The part about other significance being included in Aunt Opie's wife really pissed me off. If all significants were left out, I just say let it go. But if Opie's wife is going to be singled out, I say unleash the petty kraken and give it a camera. Lol, I love that. But unfortunately, my mom gets whatever she wants the moment she pouts. Not day home. Your mom doesn't like your wife, unfortunately. However, your mother does have a point. He can't make her put up any photos. Maybe go low slash no contact with your mom. Talk it over with your wife and see how she feels. It's nice to see a husband with a backbone on the site. Also, you might need to look into r slash just no mother-in-law 